When the Kawa Ijen volcano in Indonesia suddenly erupted with blue flames, it created an eerie and almost apocalyptic sight. However, scientists quickly determined the cause, sulfur. When sulfur burns in a gaseous state, it emits a blue flame. I find phenomena like this fascinating and love uncovering the reasons behind them. There are many videos online that include these events in compilations without explaining what they are. Today, I'm going to shed some light on this mysterious phenomenon. And just a friendly reminder, if you enjoy this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Donax Variabilis While strolling along the beach at dusk, you might mistake these tiny objects for pebbles or small rocks. But surprise, they're not rocks at all. They're edible creatures called Donax Variabilis, a species of small clams you can find at the water's edge during low tide. However, you won't see them for long. These little burrowers quickly dig into the sand, extending their siphons to filter seawater, extracting oxygen and collecting tiny particles of algae, detritus, and phytoplankton. Clams play a crucial role in the ecosystem, serving as food for fish, shorebirds, and even humans. But why do they emerge from the sand if they spend most of their lives hidden away? It's simple. Clams need to reproduce. They release eggs and sperm into the water, so coming out of the sand increases their chances of fertilization. One fascinating aspect of these clams is their ability to pop out of the sand, perfectly timing their leap with the approach of a big wave. It's believed that they can sense the wave height through vibrations, using this to their advantage to move on to the beach and then return to the ocean. Rocks from hell? At least clams are alive, so you can expect some movement from them. But what about rocks? In August 2023, people in China's Hebei province noticed something bizarre. Big and small rocks started popping up from under the ground right on the highway, breaking through the asphalt. People described them as bulges of various sizes, like seeds ready to sprout. When someone tried to crack open these bulges, they found white stones inside. It looked as if the earth was having skin problems, and it wasn't a pretty sight. Before we jump to doomsday scenarios, let's look at the facts. In the weeks leading up to the appearance of these strange rocks, China experienced serious rainfall. The rocks pushed through the asphalt just as the rain stopped and the water started to recede. It seems likely that the asphalt might not have been laid properly. According to guidelines, there shouldn't be any rocks, especially ones this size, on the roads. Proper road construction involves compacted soil followed by layers of sand, gravel and then asphalt, a method that's been around since the days of the Roman Empire and is still in use today. In this case, it appears the road workers skipped an essential step. The rocks, which should have been removed at the earliest stage of construction, were left in place. When the heavy rain came and water seeped under the pavement, it lifted and pushed the rocks to the surface. No mystery there, but some Chinese official is definitely in trouble. Martian Doppelgangers In the wilds of Utah and Arizona, you'll come across an intriguing geological phenomenon, round stone balls with unique backstory. While wandering through the canyons, you might spot hundreds of these iron-coated stones known as Moqui marbles. These are sandy balls with a tough outer layer made of iron oxide minerals. For decades, they were seen as just a geological oddity until similar formations were discovered on Mars. This Martian find, one of the earliest pieces of evidence for water on the Red Planet, sparked renewed interest in Earth's Moqui marbles. So, how did these stones come to be? Their formation is believed to be a slow and intricate process taking millions of years. Iron and minerals seep into sandstone, causing it to cement around a hematite core. This deposition and mineral buildup continue until a spherical shape is formed. Scientists estimate that Moqui marbles took over 25 million years to form. Not so long in geological terms, apparently. Previously, it was believed that Moqui marbles were much older, but some geologists now think that they didn't form entirely on their own. The spheres may have been altered by microbes that changed one mineral into another as the composition of the groundwater changed. However, the details of this process involve a complex scheme with convoluted chemical formulae, so we'll leave those specifics aside. Out of the blue and purple Mysterious balls showing up in unexpected places seem to be a recurring theme on our planet. In Tucson, Arizona, people stumbled upon thousands of tiny purple spheres in the desert. They found them accidentally and soon discovered that these spheres were sticky and released water when squished. Naturally, people reached out to experts for explanations, but the responses were varied and inconclusive. 
Some experts speculate that if these spheres are natural, they could be some sort of slimy or jelly-like fungus. Why these things are appearing in the desert is anyone's guess. Others think they might be tiny water-filled spheres, possibly intended to help plants stay hydrated. However, why they're in such an odd spot and who placed them there remains a mystery. Golden Flow While Arizona's deserts are seeing an increasing number of round items from all sorts of places, Iceland boasts its own unique phenomena, yellow rivers. This odd yet regular occurrence can be attributed to Iceland's volcanic activity. Iceland, a land of glaciers and volcanoes about the size of Ohio, is home to hundreds of volcanoes. In the last 500 years alone, Iceland has been responsible for 30% of the world's lava flow, something scientists diligently monitor. Add glaciers into the mix and you have a unique setting for some extraordinary natural phenomena. At first glance, photos of these rivers might seem like abstract art or fantastical landscapes from another planet. However, these shots taken from great heights depict rivers flowing across black volcanic sand outwash plains. These plains are formed by the movement of glacial deposits and melting ice, which develop over time and shape the runoff patterns that connect and unify all colors and elements. The regular volcanic and geothermal activity under the glaciers accelerates the formation of these deposits, creating a site unique to Iceland. But what about the yellow color? The Yellow River, one of nature's wonders on this island, can be seen in Vakhnayukut National Park. Here, the river meets the ocean, separated by black sand and surrounded by vibrant green fields. It's a sight unlike anything else, thanks to the rich sulfur deposits in the nearby volcanic rocks and soil. Yes, sulfur again, the same element that turned the volcanic eruption in Indonesia blue. Chemistry sure is a fascinating thing. The Devil's Playground Speaking of volcanoes, there's a strange black spot in the middle of a forest in Trinidad and Tobago. Sometimes dark grey, sometimes brownish, it's a huge pile of mud that is actually erupting. In 2018, a mud volcano with the epic name Devil's Woodyard erupted twice, shooting mud and gas about 20 feet into the air. The mud spreads out, covering an area about 300 feet in diameter from the eruption centre. According to data collected by a French researcher, Mud volcano eruptions happen roughly every 29 years on average. Although locals are allowed to stay in the area around the mud volcano, experts advise keeping a safe distance for a few weeks after an eruption, as the mud remains in a semi-liquid state. Devil's Woodyard is one of the most popular mud volcanoes in the country. It formed in 1852, and after its first eruption it shook the whole village, knocked down tall trees and scared the locals who believed the devil had emerged from underground to destroy the forest. This belief led to its ominous name. Mud volcanoes aren't unique to Trinidad and Tobago. There are about a thousand of them on land and in shallow waters around the world, with potentially over 10,000 more lurking in the depths. A mud volcano is either a mound or a hole in the ground that regularly or occasionally spews out mud and gases. Since these volcanoes don't produce lava and aren't necessarily caused by magma activity, they aren't considered true volcanoes. They can also have surprisingly cool temperatures, ranging from around 212 degrees Fahrenheit to sometimes as low as 35.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Can you imagine a regular volcano being that cold? Neither can I. By the way, judging from the pictures, it seems like there are traces of mud volcanoes on Mars, but we don't have much detailed info about them yet. Summer Spots There are some amazing spots right here on our planet, though. Have you ever heard of Spotted Lake? This saline alkaline lake in British Columbia looks like the skin of some creature, all covered in spots. In winter and spring, it's just a normal lake, albeit a bit salty. But in the summer, most of the water evaporates, leaving behind hundreds of huge salty pools of different colours. It's no wonder some call it the most magical place in Canada. It looks absolutely surreal. The colourful pools are formed thanks to a high concentration of minerals like calcium sulphates, sodium and magnesium sulphates mixing in the water. These minerals and salt deposits flow down from the surrounding hills into the water. The different hues depend on the concentration of each substance in each pool. Magnesium sulphate, which crystallises in the summer, is the main reason for the spot colours. As the heat sets in, the leftover minerals harden, creating natural pathways around and between the spots. According to the British Columbia Visitor Centre, the lake has been considered a sacred place among the indigenous people for centuries. 
It's easy to see why. Local tribes believe that each of the different circles around the lake has different healing properties. Considering that various minerals are found in different concentrations in these circles, these beliefs weren't too far off. In the past, the lake had even more diversity in colours, and those colours were much brighter. Unfortunately, during World War I, the minerals from the lake were used to produce ammunition. Workers would gather minerals, extracting up to one tonne of salt from the lake every day, which ultimately greatly reduced the natural palette. From green to glorious red Forget about the coloured water for a moment, let's talk about the crimson beach, which is more like red. The Panshin Red Beach in China's Liaoning province is among the world's most beautiful places. It stretches along the delta of the Liao River, and every fall this marchy area turns breathtakingly red. Why? It's all about its unique location and biology. Situated on a salty coastal plain, the soil here is packed with salts and is home to alkaline-resistant plants called seepweed. While seepweed isn't rare, you can find it in many coastal areas of the USA, Europe and Asia, the unique combination of plants and alkaline soil on the Red Beach is something special. As seepweed matures and absorbs saltier water, it changes colour. In the spring, it's green. As summer rolls in, the seepweed gradually darkens. By early September, it turns a deep red, and by October, the plant goes purple before fading away, only to start the cycle anew in the spring. These crimson beaches aren't just for tourists. They're also a vital habitat for wildlife, supporting over 260 different types of migratory birds, including 20 species that are protected by the state. This ecological haven is as important for biodiversity as it is stunning to behold. In reality, if you see soil or water with an unusual colour, it's typically due to chemicals, plants or a combination of both. In 2017, a portion of the Saline Lake in Yanchen, a city in northern China known as the Chinese Dead Sea, unexpectedly turned red. This change was caused by tiny algae called Dunaliella salina in the water, which turned red as temperatures rose and sunlight intensified. But what exactly are these algae? Dunaliella salina is a type of green algae that mainly lives in seas and typically stays green in its natural environment. However, when the salinity increases alongside exposure to sunlight, the algae begins actively producing carotenoids, a plant pigment that turns the water red. Sometimes the Chinese Dead Sea gets even more vibrant. This happens when the temperature rises sharply, creating a whole palette of different shades. The specific color depends on chemical reactions and microorganisms living in the water. If there are brine shrimps or tiny crustaceans present, the water turns red, while a high density of rotifers, formerly classified as worms, will make the water purple. Changes in color are also related to salinity, but I've already talked about that. Pearls and Popcorn We've been delving into colourful lakes quite a bit, but now let's switch gears and talk about something else. Cave pearls. You've heard of natural pearls and cultured pearls, but cave pearls? Sadly, they're not considered precious gems. These pearls form when calcium salts come together and create layers around a core. The moving water in caves smoothens the surface of cave pearls, giving them a shiny appearance. Usually found in limestone caves, they're typically less than half an inch in diameter. However, occasionally you'll stumble upon larger ones, like pearls up to 8 inches in diameter in Vietnam's Son Dung Cave, the world's largest cave. But wait, there's more. Ever heard of cave popcorn? The name alone is intriguing, but unfortunately cave popcorn isn't something you can eat. It's actually small formations of calcite, aragonite or gypsum that develop on cave surfaces, especially in limestone caves. They form either through evaporation or precipitation, which changes the surrounding limestone, resulting in these mysterious formations. Pretty neat, huh? Well, I guess I'll go grab a snack now. Don't forget to hit the like button. See you later.